Um, hello, everyone. My name is Tola T A Alabi, as you can see on your screen. Um, you're welcome to pull up masterclass, and this, this is a pretty impromptu class um, because I'm waiting to have a Zoom meeting with someone at the moment, and I just thought um, since the person hasn't shown up, um, I will just do a class, a random class, and um, just take people through my design portfolio. Uh, my design folder, my identity design folder, and just go through some jobs and just tell you the story behind them. And most of them are jobs that I've never put out there before. Um, so you might have, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you might have never seen these jobs before. So um, some of them were never approved by clients. Some of them I just wasn't really proud to show them. And some of them just didn't see a good enough reason to put them up. Um, but I, I think I'll just go through it, and this is for that designer out there that's just looking for inspiration or just looking for somebody that understands your journey. So when I talk about some of these logos I'll be showing you very soon, um, they might align with some stories that you have, and I will tell you why some of them didn't work out, and um, what I think or, or what the process was behind some of them and my thoughts right now on them. So what I would try to do right now is to share my screen. Um, sorry if this is very informal, because I never really plan to do this, but let's see. Share screen. Okay. Let me share my screen. Sure. All right, so I have a folder here. It's called identity. And um, this is where I just pack all my identity work. Um, all, all identity work I've ever done is here. I think my very early ones might not be here because I kind of lost those with my earlier system, but I've been backing them up since then. And here, this is all my identity work so far. So I'll just go through them. They are like a thousand and, oh yeah, they are like 2,800 um, images in this folder. And that's incredible. I never knew I had that many images. Okay, no, no, it's, 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 it's actually 1,484 pictures, which is really, really much to think about it. I think this is what I worked on in the past 18 years as a designer. So um, let's look, let's have a look at this. All right, okay, so, so I can see this job right here, Dalu. Um, I, can, I, 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 I can remember this job and looking at it now, I've not, I've not looked at it in years. It's been like about four, five years since I worked on this. And I remember this person reaching out to me on Facebook and he seemed to have liked some jobs I'd been doing then. And they asked me to come up with a brand uh, brand identity for this brand called Dalu. And um, you see, interestingly, this never worked out. It never, it never worked out. It never approved any of the logos I did. So it didn't approve this one. And just looking at the logo now, I, re I realized that there isn't much meaning to this logo. And, and this was a while back. I'm saying five, six years ago. Yeah. And I, 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 what I want to get from this, what, I, what I'm getting from this is that I can see how this fell apart very early on, because if you ask me what, what this business idea was about, I, would, I can't tell you right now, I remember, or I know, which makes me just think of the fact that it never really made sense to me. And doesn't mean the design, the idea didn't make sense to, to um, the founder, no, but, but I, I'm, just, I'm just saying that for me as a designer at that point, I was working more for money. So I just wanted to get paid and get out of there. So um, it was just get, do something that I thought was fancy. So for this, I don't even know what the rationale to this logo is. It was absolutely no rationale. I just, I just, I just, I don't know, just came up with this weird symbol. It was meant to be a stylized D. I just couldn't explain it. And I can see now why the client just declined on me because there was no story to this. So there was no emotional attachment to it. Um, so that didn't work out. That was one of the designs I did for Dalu and it just didn't work out. Um, it's quite unfortunate. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, 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 this is one too. Yeah, um, I'm sure a lot of people have not seen this. Nobody has seen this to be honest with you. I've never put this out there. I did this for, um, an artist, a hip hop artist, then he was a hip hop artist, now he's an actor and he had the name The Generation. And um, I'd done some work um, for his mom um, who had a school then, or who has a school. 
And he saw the logo I did for the school and he, he, he asked for my contact and he called me up and said, I want to do this logo. And um, to be honest with you, I've never put this logo out there because I never really liked it. I just didn't like it. And you see, it was just it was also many years ago when I was really just working for the money. It was just about getting that money, getting paid. And it just didn't work out. This, this just didn't work out. And um, it, was, um, it was one of those jobs where you just hope the guy, the guy approves it. And one, one thing I learned from this job was he came up with the sketch, everything. You understand? He guy sketched it and said, this is how I want it to be. And this is how I want the font to be. And I want the way in the middle of the generation to have a different text, um, font type. And, um, and it, it, for me, it just seemed a bit messy. And you can see, this is where we as designers, we, we really have to find a way of taking more control of the creative process. You see, right here, I just let the, I just let the client just take control. So it was almost like I disengaged my brain and was just only using my hands to click the mouse. Um, but he, he approved it and he liked it. Unfortunately, he's not using it anymore today. And it's quite unfortunate because I couldn't put it in my portfolio because I didn't feel it was a good representation of my expertise, but I needed the money, so I did it. And um, I, and that's one battle we always, we always have to fight. That, I need the money, so I do this work, but then I can't put the work in my portfolio, so it doesn't bring me more clients, so I don't have money. So it's a vicious cycle. But I would always advise, if you can hold out, hold out on that money and just choose your projects and your clients carefully and do the right projects, you realize that the money would come eventually and clients would come that align with your, with your style of working. Um, so that's the generation. Um, Oh, right, here's one. The voice photographers. Nobody has ever seen this, was never approved. Um, and, you know, th this is also one of those projects where I, I kind of allowed the client to take creative control too. So it was almost like the client saying, I don't like this concept, I don't like this concept. And I was like, what concept do you like? You know, it was, it was almost like me working like a waiter again and just trying to work on concepts for the client to guess what the client would like. So I, was, I really wasn't taking charge. And this way, and, and to be honest, when I think about this, they were really super early days for me. So when I think about it, none, none of these logos were like 10 years ago. I don't think so. They weren't as far back as 10 years ago. Um, the early, maybe like seven years at most, but this maybe must have been six or so years, but it's just the desperation for money that makes you try to compromise on standards. And you realize that when that gets in the way, a lot of times you, it gets in, it gets in your way of being creative. So um, this, this was um, meant to be for a group of photographers and they were, it wasn't really clear what they wanted also from the onset. And you know, it, 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 this as a business never picked up. And you know, that, that just makes, it, makes me understand why they weren't really defined on what company or the startup represented. And when a client is not really clear about what they represent, it's hard for you as a designer to have a visual representation for them. And I, I think that's what happened with this. I had a couple of iterations for this, but none worked out. Um, and that was just, just didn't work out, didn't work out. Um, so let me, let's keep going. Oh yeah, I kind of see this one. <laughs> this logo is called Papa's. And um, it, it, you know, this, this never worked out too. And, and you know, the funny thing with this logo is this is one of the options and, 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 and this client just never worked out. And, and, and what I learned from with this client is just having to document your process with a client and having a client sign off on work. Because when I did this logo, this wasn't the logo the client approved eventually, but it was also a case of the client not being clear on what they wanted. And um, I just kept working back and forth and back and forth. And, and I think in, initially we had worked on a logo. This is, now, this is a very interesting story. With this client, I worked on a couple of logos and the client like took like creative control again. And also the same reason, just wanted to get paid. 
So I gave the client, I gave the client the steering to drive my car. <laughs> and um, the client took creative control and said, this is what I want. I want the face of a man and a woman and stuff like that. And we worked on that logo. I even, I even hired an illustrator to work on that. And if I come across that, I will show you. Let me see if I can, if I can just find that. Let me, let me type that in. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so with this logo, this was what the client wanted. Now, this was not my idea. 0% my idea. It was the client's idea, have a, a man and a woman's face. And um, I think as far as the ideas went, the only thing that was uh, I put in were these um, needles because the, the, this client um, sells fabric for men and women. It was, it, was, it was for men actually. So I don't know why you had to put the woman there and it, because the brand name actually says for, pap for papas. So it's for men, but, but the client just said, oh, put the woman's face there and we did that. And um, I didn't particularly like the logo, but the client said they liked it then. And the client said, oh, add earrings, which I shouldn't have done, but I did, you know, because this is just this detailing is just a bit too much. And the client said, add a red, red lipstick, and I did. So I was working just like a waiter and it wasn't working out, if you understand, but the client liked it and I wanted to get paid. So the client approved it and um, gave the client, client paid their balance. And for me, it was done and dusted. I was never going to put it in my portfolio, to be honest with you, but um, it was done. And you just for several months later, almost a year later, the client came back and said they didn't like this logo and um, they wanted to redo it. And now that's fine, but the client wanted to redo it at no cost. They were like, oh, we, we haven't used this logo. We haven't used it. We just, I just don't like it. So I want to, on the previous fee, design a new logo since I've never used this. I know it was just, it was a back and forth where we now started to say, look, we've already put in our expertise into this. We're putting creative work and stuff like that. And time has just, this logo has expired. You understand this this project has expired we closed this project and you see that's what i was talking about getting a client to really sign off because we never really had the client signing off it was a verbal sign off but it wasn't like uh, official where the client signs off on the logo and stuff like that it was never official it was just the i like it i'll go with it and uh, and i think um to what she said was she never said she liked it she said that she would go and look at it and come back if she has any. That was she said. You see, it was always a he said, she said, that kind of thing. It was pretty messy. Um, but, but the truth is that the client was actually a very nice lady. Very nice. So, so all I'm saying that right now was never in aggressive tones. Never ever in aggressive tones. But um, she said she just didn't like it. And she wanted to do anyone. And, and the truth was, because, you know, it was never aggressive, I, I, I kind of buckled in emotionally and just said, okay, you know what? We'll go back and do a new one for you. But we'll only do one. And that's where I ended up doing this. And um, she didn't like it. And she said, oh, I don't like it. It just doesn't look right and stuff. It just doesn't look, not what I want. And it was like, what do you want? And you see, where it wasn't clear what the client wanted, it was, also, it was just a problem. And that's what the problem we had with this. And then it just didn't work out. And it just didn't work out. This, this logo never happened. Um, and I don't even know whether the client is using this right now, but, but she never approved that. And which was quite unfortunate. Um, so, so that's that's the story to this particular logo for Papa's never got done. To be honest with you, I just wanted to get over and done with this revision she wanted to do. You know, since she wasn't paying and stuff, and I, I just didn't know the direction, but I just didn't want to disappoint her because she was such a nice lady. I just went and did this, but like I wouldn't say this was the most creative thing that I've ever done. To be honest with you, it wasn't really well thought out. So. Um, I was just hoping it was something she would like, but she didn't like it, so kind of went from there. So you see, what, what I'm really trying to say is that you, we really will have failed projects as designers, but we must learn from these projects, um, we must learn from these projects. Um, so for you to feel that it happens to everybody, for projects to fall through, it happens to everybody, so don't feel like it's just you. Um, there's some super early projects here, so super, super early. Um, this was like 2009, 2009. I don't even know what this brand was. I think it was a fashion brand then, but I was getting into local design there and just put a couple of vectors, flames, a shield. But then all my logos had shield and I had this splatter at the back. And then I, I didn't even know what the difference between logo design and, and designing graphics was. 
So you see, this would never work at the logo today with all these minute details that I had going on. If, you really, if I really zoom into it, you see this was just totally unnecessary. Um, but yeah, I never got paid, never got used. I don't think it got used, but never got paid for it. But then I, was, I really wasn't concerned about the pay at that point in my career. I just wanted to get to get my hands wet. Um, super early work, super early work. Yeah, this was my first time trying to illustrate anything or trace an image out. And this was a concept I worked for for a friend of mine. Was never paid to, um, but I remember getting a photo of was it Rashidi Yakini. I'm trying to trace it out, and I just couldn't get the face. I just made the face black, man. The face I couldn't get. I could. I couldn't go into any further detailing than this. So I just tried to trace it out in Illustrator. But the client liked it then. I don't know if they ever used it though. Um, but I think, yeah, th those are some of my work. Um, very early work that people might never have seen. Um, yeah, very early work. And the truth is I've done work that really looks amateur. So when people say, oh, my work looks good now, it didn't start out that way. It was pretty simple, did this in a couple of hours because the guy just wanted me to do it. Uh, I was working somewhere and there was um, a man who was a lawyer at the company. And he just said, you know what, do this thing for me. And he'll come and get it at the close of the day. So you see, this is something I'll never would do now, like work on a logo in a few hours. But he just gave me a few hours and I closed him, came to take it. And he liked it, funny enough. Um, yeah, so there you are. Those are some of the logos I've worked on in the past. Um, yeah, but then I was super into rendering logos and I didn't even think of how they would work flat. You understand? So we were like putting effects into these logos. I just went crazy with Photoshop. I was created in, you know, we all have this emboss thing going for them. It was just ridiculous. But these people actually use this logo. But I think at the point, a lot of them got stuck with all these effects and started asking for flatter logos. And I had to go back to do flatter versions of these logos. Uh, so, so I learned on the job a lot of these things. So it's okay to learn on the job. We, we, we all make, we all make, we all, we all make these mistakes at the early period of our career. You see, just having all these things in logos just aren't necessary. And this, I think, that kind of critique in people's logos now, and I can critique it because I've made those mistakes. Um, but yeah, you see, this person liked this logo then, it was just nice, but it's not enough for the client to like the logo, it just has to work. And that's where you have to be professional as a designer to say, this thing doesn't work and go and do what works as, as a designer. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, I hope, I, I really hope you guys have found this little class helpful. And um, yeah, um, I, I, I hope it inspires somebody on their journey as designers um, to, to not give up. You understand when, when you have client, when you have this, this little road bumps on the way with clients and clients reject your logo and it might be from the fault of yours or the fault of the client don't get discouraged you know i've been doing this 18 years now and it still happens to me so i hope someone is encouraged by that today i wish everybody has a nice day and a nice week <laughs>